technology and business with Ethel Kofi. My name is Ethel Kofi. I am the CEO of Adele Technology Consulting. My main role is working with governments and businesses to ensure that they can use technology to meet their profit, impact, and efficiency goals. So a while back, I talked about um, the journey of innovation um, for people that were a bit confused about what 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 innovation was all about. So where do you start? Um, what do you do, or where do you go? Now that's been a uh, really successful series, and I will link it up there. If I'll link it up, if you want to go watch it. Now. One of the topics that was in what we had discussed before about the innovation journey was um, experimentation and prototyping. Now, you might have 10, 20, 30 innovative ideas that has come out of sort of your, your, your partnerships and your, your thinking through and your workshops. And before you jump, before you go and jump and spend the money or the resources, prototyping and experimentation is a really um, cheap and easy way for you to be able to test out and use data analytics to decide where to go or what to do. So for instance, if you have 10 product ideas, prototyping and experimentation means that you create a version of the product that you can take to the customer for them to give you feedback so that you know which product will be the best seller on the market. Or if it is that you are creating a new business model for your already existing business or a digital business model for your already existing business, you want to prototype it and test it out on the market before you change your whole company's direction and way of doing business. So today I want to talk about the five rules. I'm a fan of five. The five rules of um, prototyping and experimentation. Okay, here's, here's what I forgot to add. There are three main reasons why prototyping and experimentation makes sense. Um, number one, it stops you from spending a lot of money up front on a big scale project and having it fail and having your like your budget board or your your board telling you they're not going to commit any more funds saves you throwing money at a really big project and uh, falling flat on your face. Number two, it enables you to understand the viability of a project um, before you actually commit resources to it. The third thing is allows you to iron out the kinks on any type of product or service or business innovation before you scale it. Here's the thing, everyone is doing it. So Facebook, um, a couple of years ago, experimented with uh, the Facebook community to try and figure out whether you were more likely to click on a, an advertisement um, if Facebook told you that friend of yours had also clicked or liked um, that experiment. Now what Facebook found out is the closer or the stronger the bond um, with your connection, the more likely you are to click, to like a page, um, and to open an advertisement, um, thereby allowing them to then roll out the, um, the feature that enables you to see people in your network that have liked a certain advertisement. Now, Google provides a ton of tools that enables you to test different variations on your website, on your app. So it could be the placement of a button, it could be the difference in text and allow you to measure the performance in there. And that is, um, that's, that's really important for people that especially who are in the e-commerce the e space 
to be able to understand what that big red button is, it's more likely to get people to click um, versus a yellow button. There are moral ethics there, but this is not what we're discussing. <laughs> this is not what we're discussing today. So it's important to experiment and to prototype in order to save yourself just money, time, and resources. Rule number one, know what you're solving for and set up uh, performance indicators that help you decide what failure or success is. So we are trying to answer the question, if it's a new product or a service you're trying to bring to market, you are trying to, you are trying to answer the question as to whether it's actually needed. Um, so for example, um, if you are, you are a traditional law firm um, and you decide to digitize your services, but you decided that you wanted to digitize your services looking particularly at um, a certain type of customer being startup entrepreneurs. And your assumption and your assertion is that startup entrepreneurs do not use traditional legal firms because of the cost um, involved in um, the cost involved in make uh, in in payment, which is um, you know you have to retain you have a large retainer that costs uh, a lot of money. Now, what you could do there is set up. Yeah, what you could do there in prototyping and experimenting is to set up two different pages. Now, the first page would be um, to look at uh, the first page. You say here are a set of services. If you're a startup entrepreneur and you need, say, um, M M HR policy documents, um, so employee contracts and, and, and the like, you fill out a form and automatically we will send you customized um, HR policy documents or maybe you need a, an MOU or a partnership document. If you fill out a form online and you pay just for that service, which is will be much cheaper than a retainer cost, we can then we will then send you automatically this legal document which you can use. And then you can set another another um, website that says, listen, what you really want is legal advice. What startups really want is legal advice but cannot afford to pay for it. So um, on that page, you do your set of services and the set of services say, um, you could pay a small amount of money to get 20 minutes or even 10 minutes and you pay for just that time to talk to the lawyer to give you legal advice. And you put those pages, um, you put those pages out. Either you advertise them on Facebook or you put them out on Google or you send them to entrepreneur groups. Um, and your performance indicator will be that you are looking, you are sending out this out to 500 entrepreneurs and you are looking for at least 350 of those entrepreneurs to have clicked on one or the other of those services. And that is your matrix for failure or success. And then you look at the, the two different products, uh, which one has been clicked on more than the other to give you a sense on the product. So by just taking a simple idea and, and almost A-B testing and experimenting, you can give you a bit more understanding of um, the customers you want to reach out to and whether or not they need your services. Now, the next rule is to simulate only what you want to test. Don't put too many variables in one experiment or one prototype as if you're trying to innovate. So if you're trying to figure out whether a, a product is needed, maybe the first thing you test is that your assumption of the customer segment is right. So it might be that you are looking at young people versus older generation for your product. Test for that. And test that there is a need there for, the, for, for that demographic first before you then go and test um, for whether which product, which variation of product works. That way you're very clear and you sequentially find, find your success and failures versus if you have too many variables in one, you can get confused as to what's causing um, your success or what's causing your failure. Now, the next rule is to use as many tools as you can that to enable you test and experiment. So I'm a fan of paper and pen as an experimentation tool. 
but there are also a number of digital tools that you can do to prototype and experiment on your ideas. Um, so you can use Google Forms. Google Forms allows you to quickly and cheaply create a form that you can send out to people to fill. Um, you can also use um, there are tools on the market like Unbounce. Unbounce allows you to do variations of a front end, and usually you pair Unbounce with something like a Facebook advertising or some sort of advertising to push people to your page. So you might put an advertising out, two different variations of advertising, and see who goes to what page um, and who goes to what page, and you will get you will get performance metrics that enables you to see who's using what. Um, then Google Analytics. Now Google Analytics is free. If you use it a lot, then it costs. But it uh, Google Analytics tells you who's, who came to your site, how long they stayed on the site, um, where they came from. So they might have come from a LinkedIn, from a Facebook, from a Twitter. Um, again, Digital actually makes it really for you to experiment and test out product services, customer segments, which is why I'm talking a lot about sort of websites um, and things like that. But you can also use SMS um, to be able to um, to be able to sort of see what people are doing and and how they interact with your content. It's a little hard to get performance metrics on that, um, but it's also available to you. Now, the whole point of experimentation and prototyping is for you to learn and use that learning to make better decisions on your innovation journey. So I treat as many times as, as you can. So once you test for one variable and you learn something from there, look at your next assumption and test that out and learn something from there. I recommend doing at least a minimum of two to three experiments to so iterate whatever you learn from the first experiment to use that in your second experiment and whatever you learn from your second experiment use that in your third experiment and definitely keep data on performance and analytics that's important the data analytics is really important to be able to collect all the data of what you are learning um, across the journey now the fifth thing is be cheap and i mean it if you're the whole point of experimentation is to find really cheap ways to test out your ideas and your innovations so that you don't have to spend a lot of money out front so it does not make sense if you end up spending a lot of money on the prototype do your prototypes as cheaply as you can and test out as cheaply as you can so there you go, another set of five rules on how you should use experimentation and prototyping on your innovation journey in innovating your business. I hope this helps. Um, and if you've enjoyed this, whatever platform it is that you're watching it on, like, share, click on it, give me feedback so we understand um, a little bit what's working for you and what's not working for you. This is Ethel Kofi with Business and Technology and catch you again next week.